Good morning everyone. Today we have a beautiful day outside. I think it's around 15 degrees Fahrenheit and we have a lot of work to get done today. We're going to be doing maintenance on a lot of our mechanical things. We're going to do our solar batteries, we're going to do our truck, our Polaris, our generators, our snow machines, our snow blower. One of the first things we want to do is we're going to top off the level of water in our batteries. We've had these batteries for almost two years now and I have never had to add any water to these so I'm just gonna be checking these hopefully it'll be the same we don't have to add any water then we're gonna jump inside and we're gonna take a look at our inverter and we're gonna be equalizing our batteries so when filling up these batteries we can't just use regular water from our well so we always keep this one gallon jug of distilled water in case we need to top these things off and if you come on and look it's pretty easy to check the level on these things When you're checking the level on these batteries, you want your batteries to be full, which ours are, and you want the water to just be covering the fins inside there. And pretty much like always, these are still covering the fins, so these don't need any water. So that's one that I've checked that's good. I got three more to check, and we'll see if we need to add any water to these. So far this one's looking good too. And another thing that we were kind of worried about when we first put in our solar system was having these batteries outside. They're in an insulated box, but it doesn't really help too much. So these batteries get really cold. We have temperatures as low as negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And we've just found that as long as we keep these batteries charged, whether that means we're in the generator a lot during the winter, that we've never had any problem with these freezing. All right, we're looking good. These don't need any water. I'm gonna put the lid back on our box and then we're gonna head inside and do some work on the inverter. All right, we're inside at our inverter and we're gonna be equalizing the batteries. And in short terms, what equalizing the battery means is we're gonna really charge up the batteries really high for a short amount of time and that's gonna remix the acid and the water that's inside the batteries. We're gonna go ahead and do it. All I need to do is select the equalization mode on our inverter. And so it's basically gonna work on its own. So we're getting about 300 watts of solar right now. And when you do this, you want your batteries to pretty much already be full when you start it, which ours are. So this should take about an hour or so. So that leaves us enough time to get outside and start working on some other projects. All right, first thing we're working on outside is we're gonna be changing the oil in our Tundra. I'm gonna get fired up and warmed up and move to where we're gonna be changing the oil, which is gonna be in the middle of the yard. And one of the reasons you wanna warm up your truck before you do this, not just because it's really cold out, but even if it's warmer outside, you wanna thin the oil so it all drains out completely. All right, we've got the Tundra all warmed up. The oil change in these trucks is pretty easy. You do need to remove the skid plate, which is only about five bolts. I just use my impact driver to get those off. You drain the oil out, you change the oil filter, and you refill it with oil, and you're done. As far as what oil we use, I pretty much always just use what's on sale. We did run synthetic in this for a while when we first got the truck, but we changed the oil pretty regular in, these, in this thing, so we kind of just switched over to what was the cheapest. Uh, we use a 5W30. The Tundra, right now has a little over 250,000 miles on it and we've owned this truck for about six years and we got it with about 100,000 miles on it. So we've had absolutely no problems with this truck besides having to replace the water pump, which is pretty typical on these trucks. So um, I'm safe to say for me that just using regular cheap oil is not a problem in these trucks. So let's get started changing it. Oh, and actually we are gonna be changing the air filter on this thing too. So I'll show you how to do that. So this whole job, you're only gonna need an oil filter wrench, which I actually cannot find mine, so I'm gonna show you guys a trick to get an oil filter off. And you're gonna need a 14 millimeter to drain the oil, and you're gonna need that 12 millimeter to get the skid plate off. Skid plate's off, we're gonna drain the oil into our pan here, and then we're gonna work on getting that oil filter off. The oil's draining, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the cap where you fill the oil to kind of remove any suction and make sure everything drains out. We're gonna let that drain for a few minutes and let's get the air filter changed while that's draining. So we don't change our air filter very often. We mostly are on paved roads, but actually moving up here in Alaska, we were on the dirt a little bit more. And I think it's probably been about, it's probably been about 30 or 40,000 since we've changed this. So let's see how dirty it is. So it's not too bad, but it's definitely dirty. Here's the old one. There's a new one, so. Looks like it could definitely be changed. So we're gonna stick this new one in. 
Okay, the air filter is all done. That's pretty easy to do. It doesn't require any tools. Let's go underneath and I'm gonna see if I can get that oil filter off. I'm gonna show you a little trick on getting it off. So like I mentioned earlier, I can't find my oil filter wrench. So the first thing, you can sometimes get these off if you're lucky um, just by hand. And this one has a grip on it so we might be able to get it off. I'm gonna try that first and then I'll show you guys a little tip for getting these off. Okay, looks like we got lucky on this one. It's gonna come off by hand. So let me get it off and then I'll show you guys a trick to get this off. So I've been in situations before where I didn't have a oil filter wrench or I didn't have the right size. The first way you can get this off is you can actually just pound a screwdriver through it and then use that kind of as a wrench to get it off. Um, sometimes they have a little bolt on the end, the more expensive ones that you can get them off that way. This one doesn't have that and I'm gonna show you another cool way to get it off. You need a piece of paracord. You wanna tie it around the filter but leave it semi-loose. Then you wanna stick a screwdriver or something like that in there and you are basically gonna twist it around pretty much as hard as you can. About like that. And that's gonna grip the filter. And then at that point you can use this as a wrench to get it off. Luckily we didn't have to do that. So our next step is to get our new oil filter on there, get the drain plug in, and then we're gonna get it filled up with oil. Another quick tip, when you're putting your new oil filter on, you wanna basically make sure it's gonna get a good seal. There's a rubber gasket here. And what I always do, is I'll take a little bit of our new oil on my finger and I'll just rub it along that seal before I screw it back on. All right, so the Tundra has a 4.7 V8 and it takes a little over six quarts of oil, but I found that exactly six quarts usually fills it up perfectly. So we're gonna put six quarts in, we're gonna let it run for a couple minutes and we're gonna check the oil filter, make sure it doesn't have any leaks. And we'll check the oil level and we should be good. We'll just be able to put the skid plate back on and move on to our next project. All right, we're looking good. No leaks underneath. Oil filter seal looked like it worked pretty good. I'm gonna check the level, make sure we don't need any more oil, then we're gonna be done. Just put the skid plate back in. All right, oil level is perfect. Let's get the skid plate back on. And then next, we're gonna pull our Polaris Ranger over and start working on that. Okay, next up on the list, we got the Polaris, and this is a 2014 uh, Ranger 6x6. It has the 800 motor. And we're gonna do about the same thing we've done the Tundra. We're gonna do a new air filter. We're gonna do the oil filter and new oil. As far as oil on these things, um, some of the time we'll use the player stuff they recommend, but we also use the mobile one synthetic as a good oil we've used in these. Pretty much the same process, except this is a little bit smaller. It only takes two quarts of oil and things are a little tighter in there. So first thing I'm gonna do is get the oil drained out and get the oil filter removed. So here's the air filters for the Ranger, a little bit different looking than the truck. This one's not too bad, a little dirty, and we have a new one, so we're gonna go ahead and throw the brand new one in. All right, we got the oil filter out, and I had to use, as you can tell by these holes in here, I had to use my screwdriver trick to get this out. One of the things that sucks about this Polaris, at least, is it's really tight in there to get to this um, oil filter. We got it out, I'm gonna get the new one back on, I'm gonna get the drain plug back in, and we're gonna fill it with two quarts of oil, already got the air filter in and then this thing will pretty much be done we can move on to our next project so here's our new oil filter and again we're just gonna put a little bit of oil around this rubber seal and then when putting these on you just want to do them hand tight pretty much as tight as you can screw them on all right it takes a long time it took us about 10 minutes to get two quarts in this thing because the fill hole is so small but I'm gonna put the uh, dipstick back in, check our level, make sure we're good, put the seat back on, and next we're gonna pull out the snow blower, and we're gonna go over that thing, change the oil, and check the air filter in it. All right guys, next we're gonna be working on the snow blower. Pretty easy with this thing, we're gonna change the oil in it. These small engines don't have oil filters, so we don't have to worry about that. We're gonna check the air filter, make sure that's clean, and we're gonna put some fuel stabilizer inside of the gas tank because we might not be using this anymore this year. 
So first thing I'm gonna do is our drain plug is right here. It's kind of in a weird position. It drains right on top of this track almost. So I'm gonna use, or I'm gonna try to use a funnel right here. And then I'm gonna try to drain the old oil into an old uh, oil can. Okay, we've got our oil all drained out, and this takes one quart of oil, and we just use regular cheap conventional oil, and it's a 5W30. I'm gonna put one quart in, then I'm gonna check the dipstick and see where we're at. All right, we're done with our oil. Our oil level is good. I'm gonna check the air filter on the snowblower. Where's the oil filter? I don't know. <laughs> is it gone? Yeah. Where do you get a new one? Get to get from the hunt shop. All right, so this is the first time we've done maintenance on the snowblower, and I went to check the air filter, and there is no air filter. So at some point, it got taken out and not put back in. Um, so it looks like we're gonna have to go to the Honda shop next time we go to town, and we're gonna have to pick up an air filter for this thing. For now, I'm just gonna stick the cap back on and I'm gonna put some fuel stabilizer in the gas. We're gonna get this put away and then we're gonna move on to our generators. All right, there's a lot of things you can do as far as gas and these things when you're storing them for the season. We're not sure if we're gonna be storing this for the season. Chances are we're gonna have to use it again. So I'm just gonna put some stabilizer in this for now and we run premium gas in this. And this basically is just gonna kind of keep the gas fresh um, while we're not using it. So this just needs a tiny bit in here. And then you just want to run it for a minute or so and kind of um, get the stabilizer running through the carburetor and into the engine. And then we're going to put this snow blower away and we're going to grab one of our generators. Alright guys, we're working on the generator. This is our bigger one. This is our 2800 watt. This is the one we use more for pumping uh, water out of our well. Bigger loads like um, saws, vacuum, shop vac, stuff like that. So we're just gonna be changing the oil in this. This only takes a little bit of oil. I believe it's under a quart. So I'm gonna drain it out right into our pan. Again, this is a small engine. This one doesn't have an oil filter, but it does have an air filter. Hopefully the air filter is in this one, so we're gonna check that too. And then we'll put some uh, fuel stabilizer in this, but we're gonna be using something different. We're gonna be using something called heat. I run that through our generators and that kind of keeps the moisture out of the gas and we started doing that this year when it was really cold and I've seen a big difference in how these generators run. They seem to be running a lot better in the really cold temperatures. So let's get our drain plug out and then we will fill it up with our oil and check the air filter. So this is a Kohler generator but it actually has a Yamaha motor and we've had this one for over a year and this has been a great generator and our little generator which I'm going to work on next we've had for about five months and that also has a Yamaha motor and that's a small one and that one's been awesome. So really happy with these Yamaha generators so far. So while that oil's draining, I'm gonna pull the air filter off and we're gonna give it a look. All right, this air filter's looking really good. It's not dirty at all. We usually run this thing inside our shelter logic where there's not a lot of dust. So I'm just gonna stick it back in. All right, that oil's still draining out. I'm gonna go ahead and add the fuel stabilizer or this is a, a gas line antifreeze and water remover. I'm gonna add some of this to the gas. And I usually just put this in our gas cans, which I'm gonna fill this with, but I'm gonna put a little bit extra in these today since we're kinda of just doing maintenance on everything. So we've got all our oil drained out. I'm gonna put the plug back in and then use our funnel. We're gonna fill this up with some oil. And again, this, this little motor doesn't have a oil filter on it. So we'll just be putting some 10W30 in there and we'll check the level, make sure we got it full, and then we'll move on to our next generator. All right, our oil level's perfect. Let's get this one put aside and let's grab our small generator. So this is our small generator. It's what they call a suitcase generator. It fits in kind of a small suitcase style package. I'm gonna pull the side cover off, get to the inside, and we'll get the oil change in it. And on generators, how often you change the oil, it's completely dependent on how much you use it. The tune or two generators, we don't use them a whole lot. So we've been changing them probably twice a season. It seems to be working out pretty good. 
get out of your chicken. And it's really not too big a deal because these generators, they don't take a lot of oil to do an oil change and you don't need to buy an oil filter since they don't use oil filters. All right, and then you're gonna fill the oil in the same hole. And this one only takes 0.4 of a quart, so I should have enough left over in this one to fill it up. Okay, we got our oil at the correct level. I went ahead and popped the air filter off. This thing's almost new. This generator hasn't had a lot of use, so the air filter's looking brand new. I'm gonna get the side cover back on. I'm gonna put some of our heat fuel additive in this one also. And then we're gonna move over to our snow machines and do a little bit of maintenance on those. Okay, as far as our maintenance for our snow machines go, uh, we're not really gonna do too much to them. I'm gonna put some of our fuel stabilizer in there. Um, ideally, when we're done with the snow machine season, which we're not quite there yet, we're gonna spray some of our fogging oil inside the motor, and that's gonna kinda coat the inside components so we don't get any corrosion in there while they're sitting. Um, and then this summer, what we're gonna do is every couple weeks to so once a month, we're just gonna fire these machines up and let them run for a little while and kind of lubricate everything and get oil moving throughout them. There's no engine oil that needs to be changed in these. These are a two stroke. And basically what that means is the oil is put into the engine through the gas. There's no actual engine oil in these that need to be changed out you know, every season. So that's a good part about these. And that's just one less thing you have to do when you're maintaining them. Um, like I said, we're just going to add some fuel additive in here since we're probably going to go on another couple rides this season. All right, so that's about all the maintenance the snow machines are gonna get right now. When we are ready to put them up for the season, I'm, and it actually warms up a little bit more, I'm gonna go through and run some grease through them on all the Zerk fittings, and then we have the little jack stands where we'll jack up the backs and keep the weight off the track, and we'll put covers on them and store them for the season. One other maintenance project that I'll get to as soon as it warms up a little bit is going to be our trailer. Uh, I got a couple lights out on it, and uh, we gotta pack some grease into the wheel bearings. One thing to remember when it comes to maintenance is the more equipment you have, the more stuff you're going to have to maintain and the more it's going to cost you. Um, and we realize that every time we buy a new piece of equipment that uh, you're not just buying the equipment, you're paying to fix it when it needs repair and you're paying to maintain it. We are not perfect when it comes to maintenance. We pretty much just do what we can. Um, we're pretty hard on our stuff and it, it seems to last as long as we take semi good care of it. I think one of the main things with small engines is changing the oil and like I mentioned earlier using that fuel additive, the heat, uh, the water evaporator I think is what it's called inside the generators and our small motors has really helped us out a lot this year. So that's it. I got a bunch of tools and uh, a couple grease spots in the snow I got to shovel up and that's gonna be it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it.